What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to be ranking all of the mainline Persona games. Persona is my favorite game series of all time, and I have wanted to put a ranking of these together for a while now, and that day has finally come. I'll be ranking each game, and if they have a re-release, then that's what we will have in the ranking for them. So Golden for Persona 4, and Royal for Persona 5, for example. I won't be diving into the spinoffs in this video, but believe me, that's a video of its own, so be on the lookout for that one. Persona has always been an interesting series. It is a Shin Megami Tensei spinoff, and with its success, it's evolved a ton over the years to essentially take over as Atlas's most popular series, I think, for most people. It's definitely developed its own identity over the years, and with that has come some incredible releases. Now, I didn't play the original Persona when it released because I was really quite young, but I have gone back and played Persona 1 and 2, and while the consensus is that 1 and 2 don't hold up very well, I found enjoyment out of both releases. The series really took a turn with 3 to become the series we all recognize it for today. Overall, the games are a ton of fun, and this is my personal ranking. I know everyone has a differing opinion, on what's best, but these are ordered in a way that reflects how these games resonated with me. First up on the list at the sixth spot, we've got Persona 1. I just want to say before we really get deep into this list that just because it's last here doesn't mean it's not a good game. I enjoyed every Persona game, so let's get that out of the way. The first Persona does some really interesting things, and maybe my perception of the game is a bit soiled due to the fact that I went back to play this game after obsessively playing 3 and 4, which ultimately set this incredibly high expectation for what the series is capable of. But nonetheless, the most appealing thing about Persona games to me are the stories and characters and how everything comes together so cohesively. The combat evolves as you build relationships with characters, and the story builds as you progress each aspect of the game. In Persona games, no mechanic feels wasted. There is no filler, and while the later games do this better, the first Persona manages to do that effectively in spots. The biggest reason Persona 1 is last on this list is because the gameplay for this one holds up the worst. I mean, it can be quite rough at times. I I actually got a recommendation from a friend of mine who is also a huge fan of the series to experience the story through the manga, and I would have to agree. I really loved the manga and felt that there was some character building and story pacing that just hit perfectly there that didn't quite hit as well in the game itself. The story is about some high school students that are playing a game called Persona at the school and things kind of erupt from there. I won't dive into the story too deep, but essentially the way it's told through the game just feels slow at times and difficult to put together. Of all the Persona games, this one feels closest to SMT, which would make sense because it is the first Persona game and was meant to be a direct spinoff of the SMT series and therefore hadn't developed its own identity yet. One of the most disappointing aspects of this game though has to be how poorly it's held up. I mean, the gameplay feels extremely dangerous the UI is very bad, which is something the newer games are really known for excelling at, so if you came in late, this will be extremely jarring without a doubt, and the navigation is an absolute mess. The dungeon designs feel like clunky mazes where it's easy to get lost because everything looks the same, and it's in first person, which felt odd and difficult to get used to. The combat drags and takes a long time to get through, uses this weird grid system that I'm not a fan of, and overall just had mechanics that made things a little bit more complicated than they need to be. In the later parts of the game though, it was difficult to temper my frustrations with the game's mechanics to get through what I thought was a really decent story. For the time though, there were some pretty innovative concepts for JRPGs here. That in turn helped me see how Persona could end up growing into what it is today. Overall, Persona 1 started the series we all know and love, and I'm thankful for that, but this is likely the only game in the series I will personally never return to. I've played and moved on, and that's why it sits here on this list. Next up at number 5, we've got Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. So the Persona 2 releases and how they ended up making their way to the West is a puzzle of its own. So Eternal Punishment is the sequel to Innocent Sin. Eternal Punishment released on the PS1 here in the West before we got Innocent Sin on the PSP later. It seemed Atlas thought you could be okay just playing Eternal Punishment and miss out on Innocent Sin altogether, but personally, I strongly disagree. And as someone who came to the games late, I'm really glad I got to play them both in order. Although the quality of life fixes that Innocent Sin got on the PSP release are the reason this one sits lower on the list. Eternal Punishment still inherited some of the main issues I had with the first game. 
confusing and difficult to navigate UI and outdated feel in combat was really difficult to get through again, but not near the levels of the first Persona game. The most disappointing thing about this game, I think, was the fact that since we got all those quality of life fixes that I'll get into later with Innocent Sin, Eternal Punishment did not get those and I had to go back and play this via the PS1 release and therefore I played Persona 1 and then Innocent Sin with all its great quality of life fixes and then jump back to Eternal Punishment to kind of experience a game that was much more akin to the first entry in this series. The story though is really great. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. See, early in the Persona series, these weren't all treated as isolated stories, but rather grabbed some elements from Persona 1 even. Not to mention Eternal Punishment is the only direct sequel in the series, and the way it built off Innocent Sim was very intriguing. Characters returned, story threads were tied up, and gameplay was really refined. This truly felt like a nice ending to what were the early Persona games. If you choose to go back and play these games, I think playing them in order like this back to back, you will find that this was just a really incredible way to build a three game run that felt almost like a trilogy of sorts. Ultimately, yes, I absolutely have my issues with Persona 1, as I mentioned before, but it's not a bad game. And while some of the mechanics feel dated, the elements that helped me fall in love with the series were all there and Eternal Punishment managed to do some really interesting things with the groundwork that was laid before it. At number four, we've got Persona 2 Innocent Sin. Innocent Sin is the first entry of the Persona 2 two-parter, and coming from the first Persona, the upgrades are immediately obvious. All the gripes I had with the first game seem to be addressed in some fashion here. In terms of the story, you play as a protagonist who is a high school student tasked with investigating a curse that's been set on the school. Some craziness goes down, dreams come to life, and ultimately the fate of the entire world is set in the hands of a group of high school students. Sounds familiar? Yes. A bit in some aspects, it seems like similar themes that we are used to in Persona, but I would say they've still kept things pretty dark in the storyline. See, the older Persona games as spinoffs of SMT were very dark stories and totally very different from the likes of Persona 4 and 5, where things seem to kind of lighten up a bit. Don't get me wrong, 4 and 5 stories are also pretty dark and they definitely have some obscure moments, but there's a light-hearted tone to the characters that's missing from the earlier entries in the series. In terms of gameplay mechanics, Innocent Sin being re-released on the PSP really helped with the gameplay. The dungeons are no longer first person. The grid system from the first game that drove me absolutely insane at times is gone. All characters are able to freely change personas in battle, among a number of other quality of life improvements. The turn-based battles flow much better and don't move as slow. And the UI is starting to improve drastically at this point. You can now kind of see the devs gain their footing with the direction they want to take the series. Everything just feels like a step up. Persona 2 Innocent Sin on the PSP is definitely the best game of the initial run of Personas that released a long time ago, so if say you wanted to choose just one game to go back and play, I would recommend this one. Alright, now we are getting into the more well-known Persona games. At number 3, I have Persona 3. Most people associate the series with 3, 4, and 5, and with Persona 3 Reload coming, there are a ton of people about ready to jump into one of the coolest and most impactful JRPGs ever released. From here on out, the games on this list are like 10 out of 10s to me, and you can't go wrong with any of them. They are all interchangeable, I think, from here on out, and will differ from person to person depending on which game resonated the most with them. I won't be going too deep into the story, but basically as the protagonist, you transfer to a new school, and strange things start to happen at night. Something called the Dark Hour happens and strange creatures come out. Ultimately, you're tasked with the investigation of this. That's all I'll get into in terms of story details, but we'll say the storytelling in Persona 3 is top tier. It definitely has some dark and controversial themes for sure, with much of it centered around the meaning of death and how it impacts one's ability to appreciate life. This stuck with me and I came away from my initial playthrough of Persona 3 with a ton of thoughts around the story and how it came together. The different characters really resonated with me. I love Persona 3's story and think in terms of world building, it has some of the best the series has to offer. Before we move into gameplay, I do want to talk about Persona 3 and the turn the series took with its stylistic choices. You see, from this point on, each Persona game seems to rock a theme associated with a specific color. That color seems to set the tone for the entire game. You have blue here with 3, yellow or gold with 4, and red with 5. I feel like the color they associate with the game says a lot about the direction they take the story, which is really interesting and why I can't wait for the announcements that lead up into the Persona 6 details. Just give me a color. <laughs> I'll take that, dig deep enough into that alone to find what the new one has to offer. 
essentially the menus and the whole aesthetic uses this as a base of sorts to build off of. And I actually really, really like this about the series. And with that, Persona 3 is where the presentation just gets taken up to new heights. In terms of gameplay, Persona 3 really takes a huge leap forward from the older games. It feels much more akin to what you're used to in Persona 4 and 5. So if those were your introduction to the series, Persona 3 will be pretty recognizable. This was the first game in the series to use the school year calendar and add that major time management aspect to the games. The 3D graphics and the fully overhauled UI were a real step in the right direction. The game also introduced social links that helped flesh out the story and build out the characters you interacted with throughout the game. This was the first game in the series that gave you that complete control feeling. But with that came some drawbacks that the other games improved on in massive ways. These features were great, but hadn't quite fully been fleshed out yet. One of the major drawbacks for me was the inability to control every member in your party during combat. I personally like that complete control in combat, but outside of that, the game feels really great to play. The dungeon layouts and exploration all feel significantly better than the ones that came out early in the series, and it set a great foundation for some of the new mechanics to be refined in later releases. Persona 3 isn't just a typical JRPG, it is where Persona found its identity in my opinion, and boy am I glad it did. At the number two spot, I have Persona 4 Golden. This is probably the game that really locked me in as a diehard fan of the series. It takes everything that Persona 3 did and just made it better. The turn-based combat, the presentation, the music, and the characters are all brought up to another level and it really shows. The thing that grabbed me the most from the jump had to be the story. This murder mystery concept was intriguing and kept me hooked for sure especially in the beginning when the game was kind of onboarding the player and it felt like it was moving a bit slow, especially for those of us that have played Persona games before. Similar to other games in the series, I think we are seeing a pattern here. You're a transfer student from the city that's moved to a new town called Inaba. I will say that the difference here is you're a big city kid moving to a small town and how the story builds on that and how it affects your character is really, really interesting. Things start happening with this midnight channel and people start disappearing. It gets quite crazy to be honest, but in terms of story, I'll just leave it at that. Just trust me when I say this is likely the best story in the series in my opinion. It really is incredible how everything progresses and as new characters are introduced, the plot thickens and the story just grows into this incredible experience. The characters that I mentioned before actually help a lot with this. They are so well written. I played Persona 4 Golden on the Vita and this was my first experience with the game. And I had known of the cast of characters in the past and as the game progressed and I saw them introduced and got to know them, I was just surprised at how well the dynamic between them built over time. In terms of story and characters, Persona 4 is one of the best JRPGs ever made. As for gameplay, Persona 4 feels very similar to Persona 3 in most ways, but the biggest and best difference is that you can control all your party members, which made everything feel a ton better. The combat is more balanced. The grinding through different levels of each dungeon created this loop of gameplay that felt really addictive, but also made sense. And the difficulty progressively increased without significant spikes. The first boss can be tough if you try to rush through the dungeon, but it guides you in how the dungeon should be played and kind of sets this tone for the game. Overall, the gameplay is a huge step up for the series and seems to find its footing in Persona 4. It didn't come with revolutionary changes, but it refined everything and it still feels great today. Persona 4 is one of those games that just sticks with you when it's all said and done. The mystery of the story will keep you guessing in a whodunit kind of way, and the pacing keeps you hooked throughout. There's never really a dull moment. The presentation and the music are timeless, and the game still feels great to play to this day. I love Persona 4, and that's why it's so high on this list. At the number one spot, and what is likely no surprise for most people, is Persona 5 Royal. This game is incredible, and it's one that I've played through multiple times and I've managed to discover new things about the writing, the characters, and the story each and every time. Now I've gone back and forth between choosing four and five. For me, it's a really hard choice to make. There's times where I think about four and I just can't think of another game that tops it. It could be the time I played it, the memories I had with it, and how it shaped my standard for a great JRPG, but five really has it all. And so let's get into why I think it deserves the number one spot. 
Persona 5 puts you in control of a protagonist in a new place, in a new school. You're staying above a cafe, which is honestly one of my favorite JRPG settings of all time. I just want to go there and eat curry and drink coffee so badly. The story touches on some really complex themes around crimes committed by some adults, and you and your group of friends are tasked with teaming up and putting a stop to it. This is an amazing story on the same level as Persona 4. It's not quite to the level of greatness that Persona 4 reaches in some spots in my opinion, but it's right up there. The characters are incredibly well developed and are all someone's favorite. That's a true sign of great character development. Regardless of your personality type or what you prefer from a writing perspective, there's a character you will resonate with. For me, Futaba's story and personality and what she overcame in the game really came together in a way that stuck with me. I also adore Morgana and the dynamic between the cat who isn't a cat and the other characters in the game. The way they riff off each other, the dialogue and side stories all come together to make a believable group of friends. From a gameplay standpoint, this is the best and most refined game in the series and probably the most creatively engineered JRPG that I've ever played. The turn-based combat is extremely well executed, baton passes, persona fusion, the way social links impact and unlock new abilities, and much, much more make this one of the best gameplay experiences any JRPG could offer. There was once a time many believe that turn-based combat was boring and a thing of the past, something developers were required to use long ago to accommodate the early gaming systems because there just wasn't enough power to run more complex battle systems. But man, does Persona 5 put that concept to sleep. This combat system is layered with depth at every turn. It progressively evolves throughout the game at the right pace that helps the player feel like they accomplished something at the end of each dungeon. Speaking of the dungeons, each one was so incredibly well designed, each having its own theme, look and feel to it that really matched the situation at hand within the game at every moment. Every detail was meticulously crafted to create a great experience every step of the way. Overall, Persona 5 really took everything that made the series great and built on it. It created one of the all-time great JRPGs and propelled the series into the mainstream. Persona had a major following prior to 5, but as we are seeing with all the spin-offs and the following it's gained since 5's release, this game really set a path for Persona to be not only one of the all-time great JRPGs, but one of the all-time best games full stop. I love Persona 5 so much, and that's why it is number one on this list. So that's it, everyone. That's my ranking of Persona games. This was a tough list to make, and it was hard putting them all in their own definitive spot, but I feel good about where each of them landed. Yes, they did kind of go in order of release, but... That's the hallmark of a great franchise, is it not? We want each iteration to build on what the previous game did well and set a new standard for where the series can go. With that said, isn't that one of the reasons we all love Persona? Let me know in the comments below what your ranking of the series is and what you'd change about mine. I've created a Discord for us as well, so hop in there and let me know what you think of Persona. I put a link in the description below. So that's it for me, and until next time, I'm out.